I think it's a fair debate as to whether uh, former President Donald Trump is feeling good about what we just heard from the president of the United States in his spontaneous ad-libbed press conference, but he should be feeling pretty good about how the Supreme Court justices received Colorado's uh, case today to remove Donald Trump from the ballot over his attempts to undo the 2020 election results. This is the uh, 14th Amendment, Section 3, okay? Uh, that is this uh, piece of arcana that's in there that was designed, really, to deal with the Civil War and its aftermath that Colorado is applying today. It did seem that even the liberal justices were skeptical, meaning siding with Trump. For example, here's what Justice uh, Elena Kagan said today. I think that the question that you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. You just say it. It sounds awfully national to me. Um, so whatever means there are to enforce it would suggest that they have to be federal national means. Better Minds, a member of Trump's defense team for his first impeachment trial, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz, and former federal prosecutor Shan Wu. Good to have you both, gentlemen. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, um, I was not as taken with the one state can't decide anything as I was with the justices kind of scratching their heads at why they believe Section 3 should apply to the president of the United States. What was your take? Well, he had a great day, Donald Trump, because he had two or three great lawyers on the court named uh, Kagan and Jackson. <laughs> it was awful. His own lawyer made the worst possible argument for him, namely saying the reason he can't be removed or disqualified is because the Senate and the House, by a two-thirds vote of each House, can requalify him, something that would never happen and could never happen. And he persisted in that argument. Even during the rebuttal, he came back to that argument. So his best defense was presented, all of his arguments were presented by two of them, by two of the liberal judges and the conservative judges. Mm. But boy, gain anything from his own lawyers. His lawyers' arguments will have no impact, his lawyers' argument, on the Supreme Court. It's the justices themselves that have made this decision. It'll be nine to nothing or eight to one in favor of Donald Trump. Uh, and just for you guys at home, you can read the am amendment for yourself, obviously, but there's a provision, which is another indication, a nod that this was about the Civil War and giving people a break, which means at some point, if the House and Congress wants to remove the stink on you for what you did during the Civil War, they can by a supermajority, two-thirds vote. They can relieve you of the shame of your past duty. Shan Wu, uh, what do you believe was an indication today uh, that the bench may say... Okay. Yeah, we don't know that it shouldn't apply to the president. Therefore, let it. Well, I think that uh, Professor Dershowitz might have done a better job in oral argument, but I don't think it would have made a difference here because, as you pointed out earlier, even the liberal justices seem very skeptical of this. And they may have slightly different reasons, but I think they are united in this idea that they want to punt. They don't want to be seen as deciding this case. They're very concerned, I think, needlessly so, about uniformity. This constant refrain that came back to, for example, the quote from Kagan, you know, how can Colorado decide who's going to be president of the United States? The real answer to that is you're wrong, Justice. I mean, it's not Colorado deciding who's going to be president of the United States. It's Colorado deciding who can be on the ballot in Colorado. And that's what the real issue is, is that they have really lost their way in terms of this notion of federalism. What can the states be allowed to do? I mean, speaking to the conservative majority, they don't have any problem with the fact that 50 states can have 50 different rules on abortion. But this, oh gosh, this has to be okay. uniform. And I think that's a mistake. Uh, Alan, let's just deal with it. For people who are right now shaking their heads and saying, no, 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 this should count. This, look, it, the language is, if you just take plain speak on it, okay? No person shall be a senator, representative in Congress, or elector, of president and vice president or hold any office, okay? Now, some say that this is therefore to apply to a president because it is an office of the United States. Uh, and then the other side is no, obviously that has nothing to do with being president. What do you think? Well, I think that the justice who said, isn't this at least ambiguous? Can't you at least acknowledge that there are two ways of reading this? 
if you really wanted to include the president, he fits neat neatly between senator, house member, elector, president, and vice president. There's the argument the other side as well. Yeah, he was covered by the more general language. Generally, when you interpret a statute that has a lot of specifics, you don't go to the general. You ask yourself, why is it among the specifics? And, and, and so what I think the justice said, and I think this will be the rule, if you have an ambiguity, you resolve it in favor of democracy. Right. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.